I wasn't uh, particularly expecting to become a playwright at that point. I was trying to write stories unsuccessfully. But uh, when I got here, uh, I hadn't seen any plays to speak of, I, maybe two or three plays in my life. And uh, however, they had an active department of uh, play production. And uh, I would sit out there and watch some of the shows. And I uh, got to know a couple of the people that were interested in that kind of thing. And uh, there was another reason, I think, that I turned to playwriting. And that was that in the 30s, the theater in New York was exploding. For the first time, probably in its history, it was beginning to reflect real life, which was the Depression and these small radical groups of actors were putting on plays in storefronts and other garages and places like that. And you gave them, when you entered, you made a contribution of 10 cents or a quarter. And uh, they were reflecting the new radical outcry against the situation of the country. And that was exciting. That's when Orson Welles was starting to uh, perk up. And a number of very, very good actors, mainly actors. And a few writers, like Clifford Odets, who were leading the, the general feeling that something had to change. Because the country was slowly starving. People were being thrown out of their homes, as you know the old story and losing their farms and the rest of it. And the standard theater at the time was a very conventional uh, entertainment theater, which is what it usually is and is now for the most part. Uh, and it hardly reflected anything but show business uh, and was of no interest to me I, or anybody I knew. So writing plays seemed to be the best uh, way to confront the audience, to speak what one was feeling. There are very few instances where a work of, of literature or art or drama or anything has actually changed the behavior of people directly. Uh, maybe. Uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin could have come close to that. Or Steinbeck's uh, story of the Joad family uh, did, in fact, uh, cause the, the passage of certain legislation in Congress. But it's a very rare, unusual thing. All you can hope for, I think, and all you try to do is illuminate something so that people can make up their own minds based upon the reality of the situation rather than the mythology. And if one can do that, it's enough. What you read on the page looks like it's been there forever, but believe me, it hasn't. Uh, it's always a struggle to find what you are looking for. And the Certainly, the theater, the play is uh, as much rewritten as it is written. Uh, it's a long, arduous, mostly thankless task. Is most of your rewriting done um, uh, before you bring it into the theater? Yeah. I uh, tend to write uh, maybe the opening 25 pages of something and then forget it for a couple of years. I've always assumed I was going to be around long enough to finish it. <laughs> and uh, then come back right. and go on with it. I generally work because I am struck by something somebody has said. Usually, playwriting is an oral art. It's not an art of a writer expecting to be read. 
He's the writer expecting to be heard. And so uh, I think that if I, I hear a character speaking, either one I've invented or one I've, I've uh, confronted, uh, it can start a process of uh, creating which I can't control or even describe properly. If I, if I could describe it, I probably wouldn't do it. <laughs> that question is uh, the question, whether we can hope to ever have a uh, theater based upon the art that is at the same time reasonably popular so that it has a sizable audience. I don't know the answer to that at this point. Uh, there is no, I think the theater now is, is struggling uh, <coughs> with uh, the television and film. Uh, people go into the theater now hoping that they'll get out of it and go into movies because that's where you can make a killing and that's where you can become famous. And the idea of developing actors, writers, who want to be actors and writers for the theater is, I think, uh, diminished a great deal. Uh, it's not just here. It's uh, in Europe, it's in England. But the, we've gotten there first, as we do with most things. And it's a, a question, really, whether we can continue to create new plays and new productions and new actors and so on with next to no public support. You know, every theater we look back on with any respect was a subsidized theater, starting with the Greeks and Shakespeare and Ibsen and the rest of them. The idea of a private theater for profit is a very recent idea. Uh, and it is possibly coming to some kind of an end. I'm speaking of plays, not musicals and big entertainments and productions, but plays where people stand up on the stage and talk to each other. Uh, that, based upon profit, I wonder sometimes whether its future is questionable uh, in relation to its uh, uh, competition with these other media. Uh, a decision would have, ha would have to be made by the society that they want this to happen, that they feel there is a value here which is, uh, transcends profit and loss. We have nowhere near come to even considering such a decision.